Okay, let's open the package and start taking some of the parts out. Here you see I'm going straight to the fins. That's the first thing I'm going to do is punch these fins out of the stock so I can go ahead and sand them and get a layer of wood glue on them that I can let dry while I get started on the other parts of the rocket. The purpose of sanding the fins is to make sure that the root edge surface of the fin makes as much contact as possible with the body tube so that when you glue the fin onto the body tube, you'll get the strongest bond possible. Here I'm tracing out the fins onto the stickers that I'm going to put onto them for finishing the rocket. And then I will put a layer of wood glue onto the root edge surface of each fin that I'm going to just make smooth with my finger and then let dry. What this does is create the strongest possible glue joint between the fin and the body tube once you eventually go to glue the fin to the body tube. All right, so here we go with cutting out the fin alignment guide. And what you're gonna do with this is wrap it around the body tube and tape it together. And then with your pencil, make marks on your body tube for each fin. So basically what this does is make sure that your fins are properly spaced around your body tube. And in addition to making marks for your fins, I also recommend making marks for your launch lug and your motor hook that we're going to install later. I like to scuff up the body tube a little bit where the fins are going to be because that helps them adhere to the body tube a little better when you go to glue them on. I should have done this step before making the marks with the fin alignment guide, but basically for this rocket on this build, I just was careful not to sand over my marks that I had already made for the fins. And then I connected my marks with a straight edge. Here I'm putting a layer of wood glue over each line that I have for my fins and then I'm going to let this dry. Basically this is the same thing I did with the fins. You do this again because this makes the strongest joint that you can possibly get for these fins on this tube. So now I'm going to put the clay in the nose cone and the purpose of this clay is to move the center of gravity of the rocket closer to the forward end of the rocket, which results in a more straight or linear trajectory than if you didn't add the clay. Without the clay, it's probably gonna wobble a lot more as it takes off. The clay ensures that the rocket flies better. And then I glue on the attachment piece for the nose cone with cement for plastic models. So here I am instigating a low cycle fatigue failure of my motor hook. What in the world am I doing this for? Well, the answer is that I'm doing this because I want to be able to fly my rocket on Q-Jets. And my old high flyer will not accept a C-motor Q-Jet because this motor hook tab is in the way, which prevents me from being able to push the motor all the way into the rocket, uh, regardless of what angle it's at. I, rotate the motor all the way around and it did not fit so that is why I'm removing the tab from this motor hook.
Now I am putting on the glue for the fins. So the way I like to do this is to do the glue for all the fins at once by basically putting a bead of glue on the tube and smoothing it out with my finger and then letting it dry partially such that the glue is tacky and then sticking the fins on by applying quite a bit of pressure and then letting them sit to dry. I cut out the shock cord mount while I was waiting for the glue to partially dry. I like to put a few dots of glue on the fins to make sure they stay in place while they dry. Here I am extending the length of the shock cord with paracord. And the reason I extend the length of the shock cord is to reduce the stress on the rocket when the streamer ejects. I put some glue on my knots to make sure they don't come loose during flight. And now I'm going to continue on with cutting out the stickers for the rocket. Now, I chose to finish this rocket entirely with stickers. I did not use any paint, which is maybe not the most conventional method, but I was trying to create a very glossy finish on the rocket without having to do multiple iterations of sanding and painting in between and uh, I'll let you viewers be the judge of how it came out. I kind of had mixed feelings about it, but it was fun to give it a try and see how it came out, which you'll see in a few minutes here. Now do not do what you are about to see me do here. What I'm about to do here is glue the motor thrust ring into the rocket and I'm going to do it by inserting the ring and the yellow spacer from the forward end of the tube. Now I've done this a number of times very successfully, however on this rocket it was not successful because I was not able to push the motor thrust ring down far enough by pushing on the yellow spacer so therefore I basically had to do this again by doing it the right way or the way the directions say which is by gluing the thrust ring in by pushing it up through the bottom. The reason I don't like to do this is I don't want to get glue on the inside of the body tube where the motor is but normally it turns out okay and I'm probably going to do it this way from now on due to my non-success on this one particular build of putting it in from the forward end. And then I glue the launch lug on. The most important thing with gluing the launch lug on is making sure that you look at the rocket from a number of different angles to make sure the 
launch lug is parallel to the axis of the body tube and ensuring that your rocket will fly straight off of the launch rod. And now I'm going to put some nice fillets on the fins for strength. Here I am tying the streamer to the shock cord. And here we go with cutting out more stickers. Now I did not put a whole lot of thought into my technique with cutting out the stickers and how I was applying them to the body tube. I was kind of under the impression that if I made a mistake, it was no big deal and that I would just cut out more stickers if necessary and seams and overlaps wouldn't be that big of a deal and would not be visible from X amount of distance away. Here I am adding some launch lug fillets. Attaching the motor hook with JB Weld.
gluing in the shock cord mount.